Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about top 10 best features of Chrome OS and my own experience using these. Some of these features are added during the last year which shows how important software updates can be. This video is also an overview of the top Chrome OS features, especially when you compare it to the Android tablets and iPads. The features I will talk here also are important and practical features and not only aesthetic changes in user interface, for example like a dark and light mode. Hope you guys will enjoy this video and don't forget to write in the comments which feature is important for you, which I have not listed here. And by the way, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos and more Chrome OS updates. The first main feature is of course the Chrome browser. This is a full Chrome browser which you can use it without no limitation. There is, it's not a mobile Chrome browser is not like what you find in the in your phones. This is a full browser which you can really rely on, and that was actually the main point that I purchased this Chrome device here, this Chrome OS tablet. And additionally to that, you have also the possibility to use the extensions here. One of the extensions that which I like using is this picture in picture mode. So if I go to the YouTube and open a video, I can use this extension to have this possibility to have it in the background and it works with all kinds of the video. It doesn't need to be the YouTube video here. So this picture in picture like extension is really useful. It gives a, a little bit like a desktop feature here, like a, what you get from the Windows and Mac OS. Having a full Chrome browser in such a tablet like this is really amazing which you can take it everywhere and use it even in a tablet mode. The second main feature of the Chrome OS is the ability to install the Linux applications. Of course, this gives you the possibility to run desktop-like apps and not be restricted to the mobile apps, which are much limited in their power. For sure, you need to install the Linux environment on your Chrome OS and to do so, you need to do, go to the settings here and after going to the settings, go to the advanced developer and then you can turn on the Linux. I already had a video about it, how to turn on and install the Linux on your Chrome devices. And after that, you have the terminal where you can install the Linux applications. I already installed the application here and that's the VPS, which I already made a video about it, which is an office alternative and it works quite well. It's really compatible with the Word documents and the PowerPoint documents that I use. I like this application, this Linux application. It's I kind of I don't need the office actually if I have this VPS on my device. The third main feature of the Chrome OS is its ability to do multitasking and have a multi desktops. Let's say if you want to have a multiple apps running side by side. So you have this window possibility similar to Windows or Mac OS. You can minimize, maximize or close it and you can have the multiple windows uh, on top of each other side by side and you can use them, you can shift between them. It works perfectly as it has to be for the multitasking. You can also of course have a split screen with two applications. With three fingers swipe up, you can have this uh, multitasking window and you can also set up a new desktop. That's a multi desktop, which I talked about. And here, then you can drag and drop one of the windows and then you will have it in another desktop. Then with four, four fingers, they can you can swipe between these desktop, desktop one to desktop two, four fingers right and left. It works perfectly. It works also smooth, especially the desktop mode here. And I have, I can also move the windows from this one to another desktop that also works also. So if you move the window from the desktop one to desktop two, you can return it again, exactly dra drag and drop and bring it back and that's done. Let's move to the next main feature and that's the ability to run Android applications. Play Store is pre-installed on Chrome OS devices. So you can open it and search for the apps that you want. And for the majority of the cases, you can install them. But some of the apps are removed from the Chrome OS. And one of them is, for example, this Office Word here or Office PowerPoint. They're all being removed from the Chrome OS devices. You cannot install the Android application using the Play Store here. 
Of course, you can use the Linux alternatives or another Android alternative for the office work that you have. So the fifth feature is the file manager and Google Drive integration in Chrome OS. So you have the files app and here you have all of your documents, your downloads, you have your uh, Android applications files and also Linux files that you can access. And here the Google Drive is integrated perfectly. You have all of your files there, your folders and the document that's shared with you. And also you can make them offline easily by toggling the switch here. So the document will be uh, available for you offline so you don't need internet all the time. You can see this check mark next to it. That means that this is now available offline. And additionally, you can go to your files and you guys also see in the top that there is a possibility to share this uh, folder with Linux. So in the Linux, you will able to access the files that exist in this download folder or another folder that if you create there. The sixth main feature is the phone hub and nearby share. These both features were added during the last year, I would say, and actually they helped a lot how you interact between your Android device and your Chrome OS. They are now much more connected to each other. So we're able to use the hottest spot. It's not available here because I don't have a SIM card on my Pixel device here, Pixel 3a. And you can find your device and also show the battery. And also you can see the latest tabs that you open in the Chrome browser on your phone. But the most recent feature is the ability to see the photos that you took with you. So I took a picture here and it immediately came to the Chrome OS here. Now I can open it there. It will be first downloaded. And after it's downloaded, then I can open the picture that I just took with my phone. So you don't need to send it via Bluetooth or nearby share. So it works perfectly and it's really fast. I really like this feature. Of course, you also have the possibility to use the nearby share, especially for the documents. You still could use this feature. For me, it's a little bit slow for my taste. I wish it was a little bit faster. You have to set it up on Chrome OS first, the nearby share, and also on your phone, you have to turn on the GPS and the Bluetooth, and then your the phone will immediately detect the Chrome OS or vice versa. And then you can send the files and the other device, you have to also accept the file that it's been receiving, and then it will be downloaded. Then you can open the photo that I just sent from my phone using the nearby share to my Chrome OS. Let's move to the next main feature and that's the possibility to use the progressive web apps. The good example for that is the Zoom application. In the past, you were able to install the Android Zoom application, but now it's not possible. You have only this progressive web app in the Play Store. And actually it is much better than the Android application. It is has almost all of the features that you can find in the Windows application of the Zoom or macOS application. And I'm really happy that actually it exists and it shifted from Android to this progressive web app. These progressive web apps improved a lot during the last year also. So I'm happy to see what will come next for the Chrome OS using these progressive web apps. There are also a lot of other Chrome apps also being go to the YouTube website, you can install the progressive web app and you always see these three dots. That means that this is a progressive web app. The next main feature is the ability to record your screen and use the newly released screencast application. All you need to do is go to the system menu here and select the screen capture. You can make a screenshot or you can record the screen here. The whole settings here improved a lot during the last year. Now you can also turn on the front camera and the back camera while recording the screen. Also, you can turn on and off the microphone. You can also select where the file should be saved. Now I can select the, some part of the screen to be recorded and the front camera is also activated as you can see in the video here. Of course, when you finish with recording, you can click on the recording button down there and then the recording will be stopped and you get the notification which you take you to the video recording that you had, which you can open with the gallery app on your Chrome OS device. The screencast is also another application that Google released during the last month. 
to record your screen with some new features. For example, use the marker to draw on the screen while recording the screen and also you get a final transcript of your audio. But as you guys see also here on my HPX11, I'm not able to create a new screencast here. It is not working on this device and I really don't know why. Because with the Lenovo Duet here, I am able to create a screencast here and it works with no problem. I have the same account there and the language of the system is English on both devices. So I really don't know why it's not working. Maybe it's the processor that's not supported. If anybody knows it, please let me know in the comments what is the problem here. The next main feature which I really like using is the ability to add a folder to the sidebar or pin a file or folder to shelf. So if I go to the Google Drive here, if I want to add this to the sidebar, I just right click at the sidebar and the top I have it there now. I can easily click it, especially if you have so many folders on your Google Drive, it is really helpful. I use it on my main account a lot. So I just mark them, add it to the sidebar, I use it. And if I don't I'm finish using this folder, I can then remove it, unpin it and that's done. Of course, you can easily also add it or pin it to the shelf, a folder from Google Drive. Now I have this folder pinned to the shelf. This is also the feature was released during the last year. And I can do the same thing for a file. So you can also pin a file to the shelf here. So you have the file, you can also hide the preview here or you can turn it on. And that's this add to sidebar and pin to shelf features, which I really like. The last feature is the software updates that you get with the Chrome OS devices. As you guys saw also in this video, there were so many features that I talked about. They are in my top 10 features that have been released during the last year. It shows how important software updates can be. And I am really excited to see what will come next with this Chrome OS devices. For HPX11, the device which is in front of me right now, I get a software update till 2029. I purchased this device last year. So it is simply amazing to get so many years of software updates and be up to date and use new features all the time. I also have one honorable mention for this video and that's the accessibility feature. I don't use it personally, but I know the importance of this feature and I know that it is really well built in Chrome OS. You can also make a shortcut of the accessibility feature on the system menu, which you can easily access. And there you will find the main features that exist on the Chrome OS devices, for example, speech to text. So these were my top 10 best features of the Chrome OS, which I use every day. Don't forget to write in comments the features that I forgot to mention and it's important for you. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in the next one.